Good morning, everyone. We are at the 10 o'clock time this morning, and we would like to welcome you to our series of trainings for the Foster Care and Student Success Guide. And today's training will be the overview of the guide. We want to welcome you all this morning. We're happy that you're here. We're happy that the new guide is out and we want to give you an overview of it today. So we're not going to go in total detail, but we're going to give you information that you need to start you off for looking at the guide. And I also want to thank um, Kelly Kravitz, who is here with us today. So um, we will be answering questions and thank you for entering into the chat. So good morning, everyone. So before we get started, let's make sure we know where the guide is. So please, if you have not already, please go look at the guide. I want to let you know where the guide is. So make sure, make sure you are looking at the, the where we are looking right now. So you have a guide where it says, https tea.texas.gov foster dash care dot dash guide. So also I will be making references to pages within the guide. So now I want to introduce myself. My name is Latrenda Watson. I'm the at-risk state coordinator here at TEA. I'm, I work in the highly mobile and at-risk student programs. Um, I am responsible for foster care and student success. Also, I assist with pregnancy-related services and at-risk programs. So if you would like to reach me, this is my information. Um, please feel free to email me. I will also will give you information at the end of this presentation to let you know um, how you can reach me also. So now let's talk about the objectives for this training. We want to provide educators and all those who are working with students in foster care a brief overview of the foster care and student success guide. We also want to familiarize, familiarize you with um, the foster care guide and relevant laws and policies that affect the educational experiences of students in foster care. And we also want to provide you access to the foster care guide for purposes of ensuring students in foster care are provided the proper assistance. So this guide, today's training, we just want to let you know where the guide is, know what's in the guide and how to use the guide. So our agenda today, we will focus on our foster care guide introduction, we will also look at chapters one through three all together. And then we'll focus on the next part, chapters four through six. Then we will look at chapters seven through nine and then chapters 10 through 13. The guide has 13 chapters. We will also help you understand the embedded resources. And then at the end, we will have the conclusion and introduction to the guide series, the training series. So we'll let you know when the next series will happen. So before we start with our guide in the chat, please indicate your job title and also indicate how long have you been working with our students in foster care? We would like, who know, we would like to know who's in the room today. So thank you all for introducing yourselves already in the chat. We welcome everyone. So please let us know um, what your title is and how long you've been working with students in foster care. So thank you everyone for attending today. So whether you've been working with our students in foster care six years or one year, this guide is brand new and it is here to help everyone. So we love seeing you all today. 
We love seeing your counselors. Our, our ESC foster care champions welcome this morning. We have social workers, director of students and administrative services. We welcome you all because this is valuable information to take back to your districts. Continue fill it in that chat. We are excited to have you all here today. So welcome our one year, we welcome our 25 year, those who work with our students for 25 years. Thank you to all our foster care liaisons at the district level. You're doing a great job, we appreciate you. So keep filling in that chat. We appreciate you. We'll go ahead and start with our training. Good job. So before we start, we want to make sure that you have that, before we start the overview, we want to make sure that you have all the information that you need. LEAs need to confirm that your foster care liaison is listed in Acts 10, that it is accurate. So you are able to go and ask Ted on our TEA website and see if your foster care liaison is listed. If they are not listed, please contact your district's ask Ted coordinator to request any changes or updates to the ask Ted directory. Um, we use that information to provide you with information. So if we know who your foster care liaison is, we're able to provide them with that information. More information is available on TEA's foster care and student success website under the foster care liaison tab. And also, if you want to know who your ESC foster care champion is, they are also listed in AXTED. Also, we want you to sign up for updates. Sign up for the updates. Um, and when we send out information for this training, we use our listserv. If you sign up for updates, you receive the email for our announcement and for our foster care newsletter that just went out Friday. So you have that information. So please make sure that you have all the updates. So please sign up to receive more updates. So now let's begin our overview of the guide. So before I begin the overview of the guide, at the bottom of the slide has the page number of the information that I will be speaking about on the slide. So you can follow along with your guide that you have. Um, and also you are able to print the guide out from our website, the website that I showed you earlier. Um, you can print the guide out. We are not at this time mailing any guides or any printed copies, but you please feel free. You can download as many copies as you need. And thank you all for in the chat. Remember, we are sending out a to the administration communication tomorrow to the administrator address tomorrow. So it will be also forthcoming information we will have this information for you. Um, this training will be listed on there. This is a great opportunity for you to promote the work for students in foster care and collaborate with your colleagues and check in with leadership about any communication. So here we go, let's start with the guide. So our foster care and student success guide, here's a picture of the cover. I know you've been seeing this picture of the cover for a while. So. Um, this guide will include information for you. So we wanted to make sure we provide you with the goals of the guide. And this information is found on page nine of the guide. So the purpose of the guide, the purpose of this guide was to meet the federal fostering connections to success and increase the Adoptions Act of two, 2008 
and the Every Student Succeed Act, ESSA of 2015, that promotes school stability and require coordination across child welfare and educational systems. So we wanted to make sure that we are meeting those requirements. So we began the Foster Care and Student Success Guide. So this information is also found on page, page nine. So background information. Remember the first guide was released in 2013 and then we have a cover of the guide here. Um, when TEA joined with the Supreme Court of Texas Permanent Judicial Commission for Children and the Texas DFPS to address improving educational outcomes of students in foster care. So we worked along with those partnerships and we released in 2013 that first guide. So now here's the second edition of this resource and it reflects the collaboration efforts of many caring professionals agencies and systems working together to address the education students in foster care. And this information is on page nine. So now let's go into some of the icons that are located throughout the guide. There is the table of contents and the chapters are grouped by colors. So you'll have the color, the table of contents and chapters are grouped by colors. So if the color orange, if the chapter is the color orange, it is preference, the preface, the appendices and the references. That's that information. If it is in green, if that chapter is in green, it is an overview chapter. It will provide you more detailed information, the history, the reasoning any other information that is for that chapter. Next, if it is a purple chapter, a purple chapter, it will talk about cross systems and collaboration, how you can collaborate with others and how we assist each other with cross systems. And then if it's a blue chapter, the blue chapter is for district and LEA, local education agency responsibilities. It will tell you what you are responsible for when working with students in foster care. So those colors are very important and remember those as we go through this training. I will um, talk, speak more about each one of those with every chapter. And also we have icons that are valuable resources for understanding specific information. So we have an icon for a tip, we have icons for reminders, we have icons for collaboration. It will explain more reasoning and how you can collaborate with others. We have a note icon. We also have a law icon. It will specifically tell you the law that applies to that area. Also, we have resources, we have new items, and then we have best practice. So we, we, show, we want to show you items that work for well for others and information that you have given us, and we have included it in our guide. So please make sure you are looking at um, any of those informations. And we also want to give a special shout out to our recognition of our partners at the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services and the Texas Supreme Court of Texas Children Commission. We could not have done this guide without you. We are so excited that we could collaborate in a joint effort to release this guide. So thank you all so much for your efforts. And this information about the icons for the guide is located on page four. Also, we want to talk about our foster care postcard art. So the postcard art that is included in this guide is generously donated by the Foster Care Alumni of America. The postcard art provides insights, shares perspectives of those students, and highlights experiences from youth and alumni who have experienced foster care. So we want to let you know about that information. We have postcard art throughout the guide. So we want to thank the Foster Care Alumni of America for letting us use their, po their postcard art. So now let's start getting into the chapters one through three overview. So this will be a high level overview of those chapters. 
So first we'll start off with chapter one. Chapter one talks about education and students in foster care and in it's an overview. And what color is the chapter? The color is green. So we know if the color is green, it means it is an overview chapter. This chapter, chapter one begins on page 13 in the guide. And the topics include, we provide you with an introduction, a national overview. We talk about maintaining school stability. And then we also provide you with Texas foster care data in this area. So the chapter highlights new data, charts, and graphs about students in foster care. We also talk about graduation rates, dropout rates, demographics of Texas students in foster care. So all of this information is located in chapter one. And don't forget, the color is green and it starts on page 13. Now let's look at chapter two. What color is chapter two? Chapter two is purple. If you remember what purple means, purple means across systems and collaborations. So this chapter is going to tell you about many systems, increasing cross systems awareness. So we talk about in this chapter, improving, Texas commits to improving educational outcomes of students in care. We also speak about Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. We also speak about the court system, education system, and also the workforce system. So new within this chapter is the additional systems that were added, such as the Texas workforce. And also we provided information about how to improve educational outcomes for students in foster care. And chapter two starts on page 22. Now, in chapter two, we talk about DFPS and ESC regions. That is located in chapter two. So DFPS and ESC service region boundaries are different. So we know DFPS have 12 regions, but ESC, we have 20 regions within the, within the state of Texas. So please make sure you referring and clarify that the type of region is being referred to when you're working with partners within the child welfare system. Um, the community-based care rolls out across the state with DFPS and the map will change. So we have, we have um, hot, hot link the app where the community-based page web page will be and they will have the most up-to-date map. So this information in chapter two is located on page 28. So if you're following along with me now, you should see this information on page 28. And the icon of the green flag, we see the icon of the green flag is also provides you with tips. So it provides you with information that will assist you and help you find more information that you're ready to locate. So now let's talk about chapter three. Chapter three, the color is purple, which means we're still working on cross systems and collaboration. So the title of chapter three is Building Cross System Partnerships with Education, Child Welfare, and the Courts. So um, the, the topics that will be discussed in chapter three are cross system collaboration is necessary, guiding principles and ground rules, practical steps for establishing and collaboration and local partnerships and collaboration in action. Chapter three begins on page 29 and we want to focus on the importance of collaboration with DFPS and the school, the local education agency. So lessons learned from cross systems collaboration efforts and explanation of the foster care consortium. So in this area, in this chapter, you will build more knowledge about how to work with others with cross-system partnerships for the success of our students in foster care. And chapter three starts on page 29. 
So now let's pause. I've been talking for a while. So let's pause for a moment in the chat. Would you talk about how would you build your knowledge of this guide? So I've, I've done a high level overview of chapters one through three so far, just to let you know what's in there and what to look for. But how can you help others build their knowledge of this guide? And also for our our other school districts, how would you help others in your school or your district understand this guide? What could you do? Go ahead and write it in the chat. What could you do to help others learn more about this guide? Yes, making sure the awareness of the trainings and also you can provide your own trainings in the area. So we will make sure that we provide you with any information that you may need. Cross systems and collaboration with other departments who work with students in foster care so they can understand this is great information. Breakout sessions, that's a very good idea. Yes, taking notes and actually going through the guide and taking notes of where certain specific information is. If you make notes about certain information, so when, uh, uh, when something occurs, you know where to go directly in the guide to look for that information. Yes, bringing the guide up in meetings so everyone would know new, the new guide is out, new guidance from TEA is out to help you understand how to, un, how to help our students in foster care. I like how you say train all foster care liaisons in our district by sharing notes, creating PowerPoints with pertinent information. Very good. Discussion in PLCs. Use those professional learning communities to speak more about information. This is very good information. Thank you all for sharing because your sharing will help someone else build their knowledge of and things, ideas that they can do within their district. So thank you all for sharing that information. So now let's go to chapters four through six. Let's, I'm going to give you a high overview of chapters four through six. So chapter four, remember the colors, I'm always going to focus on those colors. Chapter four is green, which means it is an overview chapter. We are providing you, and the title of the chapter is Child Welfare 101. This is giving you the basic information that you need to understand about child welfare. So some of the topics in this chapter are what is foster care? So we provide you with information about that. Also how children and youth enter the foster care system, the types of abuse and neglect investigated by DFPS. We also provide you with information about reporting child abuse and neglect, living arrangements of children and youth in foster care, a student's journey through foster care. So we provide you with a whole information about the journey of the student. We provide you about key people involved in the life of a student in foster care, working with key people in a DFPS case in the school setting, and then other situations where a child may be living in, out of home care, but not in DFPS managing conservatorship. So we wanted to provide, this chapter provides you with great new information about foster care laws. It provides foster care liaisons information, parents, and anyone working with students in foster care. It provides you with a basic explanation of placement types. And also that journey, the child's journey through foster care is very important information to let you know what, been, what has been going on with the child. We also provide the information about the, the, the key people who are involved. And some of those key people who are involved, we provide that explanation of what they are and how they impact that child's life. So here is our key people. We call it our, our lovely, this is a lovely graphic of the key people 
who are involved in the life of a student in foster care. So each person has a description of their involvement with the student and explanation. This graphic is on page 45 and everything that is after this graphic, it explains each person's role that they play in the child of the, in the life of that student in foster care. So beginning in chapter four, this key person who involved, it begins on chapter 45 and we do have explanations of each one of these persons of what they do for the student in foster care. So now let's move on to chapter five. Chapter five is blue. So can you tell me what blue means? Blue means that it is a district or a LEA responsibility. So we talk more about the responsibilities of the local education agency, the district, LEA, foster care liaisons. What are your responsibilities and your expectations? So we provide you with liaison introduction and overview. We provide you with annual reminders and also the 13 keys. We provide you with the 13 keys for activities for LEA foster care liaisons. So, and this information starts on page 53. Chapter five starts on page 53. This chapter was expanded and provide you with more keys than in the last one. So we want to make sure that you look at those key activities. Those key activities actually start on page 57. So the chapter five begins on page 53, but if you're looking to look for those keys and want to understand more of what you're supposed to be doing as a LEA foster care liaison, that starts on page 57. Let's look at chapter six. Chapter six is also blue. So blue is telling us that district or LEA information. So we're talking in this chapter, in chapter six about school enrollment withdrawal and other transition considerations for students in foster care. So things that are highlighted in this chapter are why prompt enrollment is important. We talk about the time frame for enrollment in a new school, records needed to admit and enroll a student in school, information necessary for admission and enrollment is described, the actions to take when a student in foster care withdraws or changes schools. And we also speak about DFPS coordination to support school transition and other school transition considerations. So this chapter has a lot of information in it. And we want to make sure that you have the tools and the guidance needed to assist our students in foster care. So in the chapter six, starts on page 62. So now let's talk about where it is located. So I've given you information already. I want to know if you've been paying attention, number one, and have you been looking at your guide? So make sure you're looking at your guide. So in the chat, if you would answer number one, number one is where, what chapter would I find state data for students in foster care? In what chapter would I find dad data for students in foster care? So we have chapter one. So everyone's been paying attention so far. So chapter one, you can go and find information and up-to-date data about students in foster care. Very good. Now for number two, the circle of support for a student in foster care. What chapter would I be able to find information about the circle of support for a student in foster care? Y'all are doing a great job. You even gave me the page number. So yes, it is chapter four. We just spoke about our student, that circle and that circle of support for our students in chapter four. Very good job. And the last one, what care, where could I find information about the foster care consorta? 
where can I find information about the foster care consortium? Everyone's been paying attention so far. Great job. In chapter three. So thank you all for participating with where is the information located. And remember, you all can do this too. When you're giving information about um, in your trainings, what you're going to hold in your district, go through the guide, help them locate certain things within the guide. So thank you all for participating. So now let's continue with chapter seven through nine. Let's talk about chapter seven through nine. So chapter seven, chapter seven's color is blue, which means it has district and LEA responsibilities in it. So the title of chapter two is identifying students and maintaining confidentiality. So the topics that are within this chapter are reasons why schools must identify the students in foster care, provides you specific information. Also talk about acceptable documentation for identifying students at enrollment. We talk about foster care and PEAMS coding. We talk about FERPA and information sharing for students in foster care. Practices to identify students and ensure confidentiality, and then communicating need to know information. So we provide you guidance on all of these instructions and the, it, what's in the guide, it is expanded explanation of PEAMS coding and why details are provided and why schools need to identify students in foster care. And chapter seven, it begins on page 78. So mark those down. And I know some of our registers who are here want to know more about foster care and PEAMS coding. You mark chapter seven down and highlight chapter seven. So here is the PEAMS coding, the updated PEAMS coding. We have our foster care PEAMS indicators. Our chart is C196. And this information is located on page 81 within the foster care guide, where it specifically speaks about um, PEAMS, the foster care PEAMS indicators. Next, let's look at chapter eight. Chapter eight is one of our new chapters in the guide. Uh, it is purple, which means it is for information for cross systems and collaboration efforts. So the introduction to the Every Student Succeeds app. So we want to provide you more information about the Every Student Succeeds app as it is described. We talk about ESSA and Fostering Connections and Texas Law all of those together and how they impact each other and impact for students in foster care. And we also talk about foster care topics and common questions. All of these are related and we wanted to make sure we focus on information in this chapter such as transportation, we talk about data, and we also use questions that have been received when we were building out this chapter. So questions that you have asked before, we are answering those questions in this chapter. So chapter eight begins on page 87. Chapter nine, chapter nine is green, which means it provides an overview. So we're giving a, you an overview of the education decision maker. So in this section, we are in this chapter, we're talking about education decision making authority, who has the authority to education decision making for students receiving special education services. We also talk about caregiver and caseworker general education decision-making responsibilities. And then we speak about deciding where a student attends school. And then lastly, we, we talk about involvement of the student's parents or other family members. So in this chapter, it is very important information about DFPS responsibilities 
and understanding of the 2085E. So we wanted to provide you with information about that form. We also provide you information about law. The law icon is in here, tips, icon, the note icons to help you understand any topics. And chapter nine begins on page 95. So now let's pause for a little understanding. So from the content you have seen so far, what information has stood out to you? So based upon, I went through chapters one through nine so far. So what has come and what has, um, what content has stood out to you so far within the, the new foster care guide? So you can place that information in the chat. Chapter eight, yes, chapter eight is one of our new chapters. So it's going to provide you with information about that. Pings and confidentiality, good, good one. Thank you for highlighting chapters four and chapter seven, especially for those attendance clerks. I'm, I'm glad you're going through it now and looking at page numbers. Great job, the PEAMS coding. Chapter seven is what I need right now. Good job. So remember, it is the guide is on our website now, downloadable, and it is new guidance for you to use right now. Thank you for using the icons. We wanted to use something purposeful to you to where it is easy to use. We hope the guide is user friendly. Advocating for families. Yes, use this, use this guide to advocate for families. And I see transportation coming up a lot. So yes, use the guidance in this guide. Thank you all. So hopefully this has been a very good overview training so far of the new guide. Let's continue on. Here we go. The last chapters, chapters 10 through 13. So chapter 10, we want to introduce chapter 10. It is a new chapter. This is one of our new chapters. Remember we had chapter eight, and that spoke about ESSA, and here we have chapter 10. Chapter 10 is green. So green states that it will provide you with an overview of information. So chapter 10 is trauma-informed school supports, student mental health, and discipline. So all of these will be spoken about in chapter 10. So some of the topics and the headings in chapter 10 is the impact of trauma, traumatic childhood experiences on education. We also speak about adverse childhood experiences, ACEs. We, this is very important information to help students, our students in foster care who have gone through traumatic experiences. So we want to provide you with information on how to best assist those students. Uh, some other topics are trauma-informed school communities, supporting the mental health needs of students in foster care, and then student discipline, any special considerations for students in foster care, the truancy and attendance concern, bullying prevention, and multi-tier systems of support. So all of these are within chapter 10. So we wanted to make sure that we provide this pertinent information for you to assist those students. So chapter 10 begins on page 100. Let's look at chapter 11. Chapter 11, the color is blue. So chapter 11 is giving you information for district and LEA responsibilities. So the school experience, promoting student success. So we're here because we want to promote our student success in foster care. So 
We want to talk about creating a school environment that is sensitive to the experiences of students in foster care. We also speak about programmatic school supports for student academic success and well-being. We talk about implementing academic supports and intervention according to state law. We also speak about promoting high school completion, determining the right endorsements for graduation, the impact of testing on high school completion, and determining when a high school equivalency program is appropriate. So we focus on this information in this chapter. This has, this has updated information to about the transition assistance rule. So we talk more about the transition assistance rule in this chapter, very specific information. We also have information related to high school graduation plan and how it was integrated into this section. So chapter 11, it begins on page 114, 114. Let's look at chapter 12. Chapter 12 also blue. So that means it provides district and LEA responsibilities within this chapter. So chapter 12 title is students eligible for or receiving special education services. So we want to make sure we have that great information, up-to-date information, appropriate guidance for those students. So some of the topics within this area are special education eligibility, Serving as parent, serving as parent regarding special education decisions, surrogate parents. So we provide you information about surrogate parents, the role of caregivers for students in special education. Also request, requesting a psychological or educational evaluation of a student. We talk about the process for that. Considerations for highly mobile students. And then if a student's special education needs are not being met, we give you information about that. And then the last one is section 504. So in this section, we wanted to provide you with information. The formatting is similar to the last one, but we have updated information for the special education guidelines and expectations for special education in Texas. So this section is providing updated information. Chapter 12, it begins on page 130. And here we go, chapter 13. This is the last chapter in the guide. So chapter 13, it is green. So it provides you with the overview of for transitioning from for foster care and post-secondary educational opportunities. So now we want to provide that whole the whole picture for the student. As they come in and they work with us educational wise, we want to now transition them to post-secondary education and opportunities. So in this area, in this chapter, we speak about transitional living services, helping students prepare for transition to successful adulthood. We also speak about high school to college and career, creating post-secondary pathways, we speak about post-secondary education opportunities. We speak about financial supports for post-secondary education. We want to prepare students for college. And then also college support networks and college campus programs. So in chapter 13, in this section, we expand information about college and career planning for you. We provided more information about post-secondary. And then we also speak about our higher education foster care liaisons information and things you can do to reach out to those post-secondary and higher education foster care liaisons. So this is very valuable information for you to use to assist your students into post-secondary and transitioning from foster care. And chapter 13 begins on page 137. So now let's talk about the additional information that is within the foster care guide. We want to provide you with other information. So on page 147, we have the end notes for all of, and they are hyperlinked within 
the document within the guide. So any end notes that you may have and you can click on that number, it'll take you to that. We have all of them gathered in one place on page 147. The appendices, the appendices start on page 151. It has great information in appendices. We provide you with a glossary of terms. We provide you with the rights of children and youth in foster care. The students in foster care have rights and it is good for those who work with students in foster care to understand those rights, to guide those students in the correct way. We also have key people involved in the life of a student in foster care. Remember that graphic. We also have the CPS process. We have the flow chart for the process that the child goes through when um, CPS is involved. We also have the sample of a placement authorization form. So we have a sample of the 2085 form and we also have a sample of the 25 E form, which is the designated of educational decision making, decision maker, who makes the decisions for that student. G, we have a list of school records to be transferred through T-REC system. So we actually provide you with the actual list of school records that should be transferred through T-REC. We provide you with educational records collected by CPS system case records, and the educational portfolio. We provide you with that information. We also have um, a description of the responsibilities and duties of DSP, DFPS regional educational specialists. So remember, as we refer back to the ESC regions and the DFPS regions, so each one of those DF regions have regional educational specialists. So we are happy to have cross um, collaboration with those DFPS specialists and for the success of our students in foster care. Also, we have a resource section for you. So any resources that you may need while working with students in foster care, we have all those in one place. And then the last one appendices is DFPS forms, enrollment and identification FAQ. So we have an FAQ for any questions that you may have or encounter, um, you can go to the FAQ to see if that information is there for you. So the appendices, we updated the 2085 and 2085E, and we also, the FAQ added more information about enrollment, documents, and forms. So please check out that FAQ. And then on page 170, we provided you with the original guide key contributors, and then also we provided you with beyond the guide. And we also want to make sure we provided citations, disclosure, and the copyright. So now, since we have been through all the chapters of the guide, we've been through chapters one all the way to chapter 13. So we provided you with a high level um, just introduction to the guide. So how will this training be helpful for your understanding of the guide? So hopefully we were able to go through and key point where key issues and concerns that you have are located within the guide. And then also provided you with information and new updated information. So hopefully the guide will help you understand what's going on and how we can help our students in foster care. So please let us know, has this training been helpful to you today? And also think about ways how you can take this, this training and take it back to your district or your, your LEA and explain the information and specific and you know what your needs are and you know what the needs are for your students in foster care. So please take back information and provide um, trainings to your um, district, to personnel who work with students in foster care. So we hope this information has been very helpful for you. Um, the training, we will be providing trainings. I'm going to cover that also. So hopefully the guide, um, it was a lot of hard work going into the guide. We want to thank our partners with DFPS, 
and the Texas Children's Commission. And we worked on this together to make sure we support our students in foster care. So now, when is the next training? We will have more training. So our next training will be March 25th from 10 to 11.30. We will go in detail now. We will go in detail on chapters one through three. We will go through the chapter. We will speak more about the content that is within each one of those chapters. So the next one will be March 25th. And then after that, April 22nd, we will focus on chapters four through five. So these are the next trainings for the information that is within the guide. And when we do this, you may provide more information. You may provide more reach. And for information about registration, please look at the link at the below. You can type in that link and it will take you straight to the page where you can register for both of these sessions. And remember, this training is an overview training. If you have more detailed questions, please email us and let us know those questions. Today, we wanted to provide you with a brief overview of the guide. We, we want to introduce the guide to you. So this is the guide being introduced and letting you know what is in it and how you can use the guide. And remember the actual if you type in the link at the bottom of this page, it will take you directly to where you can register for both of these sessions. And we also remember we have a to the administrator address will be coming out tomorrow with this same information in it. And we want to make sure you have that also and to look for that information. So if you have further questions, please email fostercareliaison at tea.texas.gov. That is our mailbox for any questions. If you have questions regarding guidance to certain situations that are you having, please email the fostercareliaison at tea.texas.gov. So please make sure you email the foster care inbox. And before you go, could you please answer our survey? We want to better support you. So any, any supports that you may need, any trainings that you may need regarding foster care, please use this survey. We utilize your feedback. We need your feedback. So please answer any questions for this survey. And we will have the information, the survey link. So hopefully... Everyone is ready. We're ready to support our students in foster care. We provided you with a new guide that has pertinent information in it for you. So if you have any questions, please email um, them to us. And we want you to pro please provide us with information that will be helpful to you. Please provide us with any feedback that will be helpful to you as you provide um, instructions for your district. So anything that is most helpful to you, please let us know. So we are here to support you here at TEA. So thank you all for coming today. Um, please invite and thank you all for using the chat. We're super excited too about the new guy being out and ready to support our students. Thank you all for attending today. We did record this, so this will be on, the recording will be on our website, and we will also include this slide deck on our website. So all this information, please keep looking for our foster care website. It will be on there. We want it to make sure you have it. So this recording will be available, and also this pre presentation deck. So thank you all for attending today. Any any other information you have, please feel free to put it in the chat.